Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael. We're excited you joined us for this adventure. So today, I'm super, super excited because we are still in our series for Women's History Month. And if you haven't heard the last couple episodes with some amazing women, the whole reason I wanted to showcase these individuals is because they are making history in real estate. And so I want to make sure that everyone knows who these women are. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Lindsay Iskerka, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here, and I'm really excited. Us too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Obviously, we were chatting offline, getting to know each other a little bit better. But Lindsay, would you mind sharing with our adventurous family a little bit more about your background and like why you started investing in real estate? Absolutely. So I was born in Orange County, California. I was born and raised. After grad school, I was working with kids with autism. I got my master's in behavioral therapy. And I knew I was wanted to work with people, right? That was something I really wanted to have. If I was going to make a earn a living, I wanted to be, you know, helpful and helping people was a way to do that. And I fell in love with that field, but it just at the time didn't make very good, very good money. And so I was personal training on the side and I met my now husband and he had an interest in investing. And I had never heard anything about real estate or stocks. No one in my family invests in real estate. I don't know anyone that doesn't have more than just their primary home. I never saw that as a wealth building vehicle. It really was totally foreign to me. And so he introduced me to that. We started reading books and listening to podcasts. This is back in, gosh, 2013. Between the years of 2014 and 2015, we dove into real estate. We went to you know some seminars and educated ourselves. And ultimately, I just I fell in love with that asset class. And so we started by house hacking. People haven't heard of that. That is, it's when you you know buy a house that's bigger than what you need. You rent out one unit. You or I'm sorry, you live in a unit, rent out the others. Helps offset your your mortgage payment. So for a couple of people who are newly engaged and newlyweds like we were that didn't have any money, that was a great way to get started in real estate. And it really just started off from there. I became an agent during that time as well and worked really hard and built my real estate agent experience in my business at that time. So one thing led to another. Now that's back in 2015, eight years later, I'm blessed to be the lead agent for the David Green team, Southern California. So David Green, he's the host of the Bigger Pockets podcast, massive outreach with his podcast, his books, his impact that he's made. And so he's, I've always been looked up to him for several years. And so it's actually really cool to now be his partner for the Southern California team. And now we're able to help other people get started or grow their real estate portfolio in what would seem like an impossible market, right? We hear that, oh, it's too expensive, too hard to get started. The numbers don't work, this and that. And we're like, well, here's how I did it. Here's how I am doing it. And here's how other people have done it. Here's what works. Here's what doesn't work. And we're, we help people along that journey. And it's a, it's a blessing. So in a very quick snapshot, that's my background. That's how I got here today. Now, I appreciate you sharing that. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And one thing I do want to point out, even though there are many, but like the main one that sticks out to me is, you know, bigger pockets. Like a lot of people might think like, oh my gosh, there's so many people on this platform. Like, am I a little fish in a big pond? But like, there's enough room for everybody in this pond, right? Like Absolutely. you said, Lindsay, that's how you started. Michael and I found bigger pockets when we first started our real estate journey. Like a lot of people go to that resource because it works and because they have amazing resources, right? So if you haven't checked out bigger pockets, please, please, please do. And if you have and you've had success, we also want to know that because your pockets has done wonders for many. Yeah. It, I mean, look at what they've done for you guys, right. in your own journey too. So their, their impact goes way, I think a much deeper than we'll ever really know. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. If anybody out there is listening is, hasn't heard of bigger pockets, basically it's like a giant forum. We're all real estate investors from, I mean, every background of real estate investing from mobile home parks to single family to, you know, fixing, fl uh, flipping and everything, all types of real estate, all flavors of the rainbow, if you will. Uh, kind of descend on like this one like forum and then there's like obviously topics and subtopics and things like that basically like a reddit for uh, for real estate basically right so how do you explain it yeah essentially <laughs> they, they have so many, so many free resources too and i think what I, what makes them so impactful is like for example i didn't share this really in the first my little background but a big part of our story is the fact that we went to one of those quote unquote free seminars that's going to teach you everything you need to know about real estate investing right in reality they take they get you in debt for in our case, it's forty thousand dollars, 
and taught us how to re- invest in real estate. But I walked away not really having much at all. But that experience it was a, a catalyst, if you would, to get us really taking action, paying off that debt, and getting into a house hack and really making making this work. So the difference with bigger pockets is, you know, they have like a paid membership that's very inexpensive and books that are very inexpensive, but a lot of stuff is free. Yeah. Right. And it's real information. There's no fluff. There's so much fluff in this business, in this industry. And so I love what people like you, what you guys are doing and just saying like, you know, here's how to actually do it. And here's how we've done it. And, you know, just trying to benefit other people and help them grow wealth too. Cause like you said, there's enough for everybody mm-hmm. in this industry. So I love the way they've done business and how many people's lives have been able to change as a result of that. So it's been really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And I thank you for even like sharing sharing that about your initial seminar, right? Because Mm -hmm. a lot of times what you see online is just everybody's successes, right? So then when you, somebody does happen to lose, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't do it right. How did it happen to me? Why did it happen to me? Like, am I even, is it worth doing this? But another great example of how it is because it only gets you one step closer to like doing things in the right direction over and over and over. Yeah. And if you can find the blessing in it, right? So we found the blessing in that as a newly engaged couple, we were still just dating at the time that we did this, but it made us have conversations about money, oh right? It made us be honest with each other about where's the, where's, where's the expenses going? You know, can we afford this? What do we have to do? And, you know, so when I'm working with a client, for example, and they want to invest in real estate, but they're not willing to do what it takes to pay off debt, to improve their credit, to save up some capital, I'm thinking like, you know, do you really want it bad enough? We wanted it bad enough that we moved in with grandma for a year and a half to pay off that debt, (laughs) right? And then saved up to buy our first triplex that we lived in for about three years, brought our daughter home in that triplex, you know, got married there. We didn't take a honeymoon. So there's sacrifices made along the way that I think people don't really talk about enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and we're all grateful for it, right? Like we're, we happily made those sacrifices, but we do need to have really realistic conversations about what it takes to get to the level of your success, the level of David Green's success, you know, because there's a lot of bumps along the way, but the successful person finds the blessing and the lesson Mm -hmm. in those bumps. And uh, so, yeah, it's a hundred percent. I love that. And one thing I also want to mention, you said, you know, from the very beginning, you started talking about money and finances in your Mm -hmm. relationship. Like I think I could be wrong, but like, I'm pretty sure like one of the top reasons why people get divorced in this United States is due to some fi- financial issues, right? Because like we're taught, you know, growing up in the U.S. school system, the public school system, basically there's not a lot of finance courses, right? And like mm-hmm. depending on, on your parents, a lot of times, like in my family, for example, like money wasn't just, wasn't never talked about, right? So you don't really talk about it. Like, if there's some financial issue, it's kind of like hush hush and like nobody's really talking about it and bring it to light and then you don't have these discussions right and so like there's not a lot of financial education in the public school system either right so then people aren't talking about money and how it works and things like that how you can make money from your money all these different things right but and i think it's really important and Susie, i ended the same thing like from the very beginning when we started dating like talking about money you know what were our goals financially and stuff like that and then like being very open about what we're spending money on and like keeping a budget together and stuff like yeah. that so i think it's very important for a healthy relationship as you mentioned so I- Absolutely. It's been such a blessing for us. Like we had a goal when we got started in this to have Ryan, because my husband was former law enforcement. He was law enforcement for 10 years. And when we met, we had the goal of having him be able to step away and retire earlier just because we wanted him to be around the kids. We wanted a life, you know, and, and that kind of lifestyle was was really difficult on uh, both of us. And we knew it was gonna be hard to have a family, you know, the way that we wanted to run our family with that. So we were able to accomplish that goal of having him resign from LAPD within five years instead of 10. Wow. And through real estate. And yeah, and now he does real estate with me and he's on David Green's lending team. And it's, it's such, it, you know, real estate really changed our life. But being able to be open and vulnerable, I had to be honest about, you know, my shortcomings with finances. And he was very patient with me. And, you know, we both held each other accountable to our goal. We had such a hard goal that we both really committed to it. And so we share that with other people as well, trying to help couples get on the same page. Because if not, it's going to be a hard road (laughs) if they want to, to be on an investment journey with real estate, especially. Yeah. I understand that. I just wanted to step, take a step back from something you said at the very beginning. Like, you know, you had mentioned that you're investing and help others invest in Southern California, which is a place where a lot of people kind of shy away from. And I want to come back to this in a second and, and revisit, but like, there's a lot of talk out there of people are very negative sometimes about like, well, investing in California, but also investing in other places. And they're like, 
oh, I can't invest here or whatever because it doesn't make sense. So every location, there's people investing. And so it's just getting around the people who are actually doing it in the area that you want to invest in or you think you want to invest in, understanding how they're doing it, right? Because you said at the beginning, Lindsay, like this is how, you know, I'll show you how we can do it here, right? This is a number of th things like that. Like here's how you can actually invest and make money in California, even though it might seem like it doesn't make sense, right? So absolutely. And I'm honest, like I invest in California and out of California and I've done both and I do both. So I share, what is your goal with this first investment property? Right. And I tell people, okay, it might seem safer to go and take 25% down and go buy a house in the Midwest or go buy a house that is $200,000 and is going to cash flow you a few hundred bucks a month. Like, that's cute. That's great. That's a good start. But <laughs> if your rent's going to be increasing by 200, 300 bucks next year, which is not uncommon in Southern California, right? Then why does it matter? Why does cash flow, why is that so attractive if it's still going back towards your rent? I tell clients, you're paying a mortgage regardless. It's either yours or your landlord's. And whose mortgage you decide to pay is what's going to determine your wealth. So I tell them, let's utilize the primary residence loan options, lower down payment, better, better interest rates, fewer closing costs than investment property loans, and being able to utilize the high rents to help pay down your mortgage quicker. And here's a creative strategy that you can utilize to house hack. And if you want cash flow or if you want appreciation, we'll try to get a glimpse of what they're looking to accomplish. If they're not looking to replace their income right now, but they plan to retire in five years and 10 years and 15 years. And we'll kind of put them on a plan and say, okay, here's, here's a couple strategies that can get you on that road. This house will not cash flow today, but you know, in the next five years, here's what you can expect. In 10 years, here's what you can expect. And you know, I tell them my California properties have always made me a lot more net worth and equity gains than my out-of-state properties. They both have their pros and cons. I'm not knocking one or the other one. They're just different strategies for different investment types and what their goals are. I think it's good to be diversified regardless. But if you are going to live in Southern California or any expensive market, right, try to utilize ways to utilize real estate investing to lower your cost of living and build equity quicker. That's going to help you scale faster versus trying to save up 25% down for another $200,000, $300,000 home that could take a lot longer to actually build that financial freedom. Yeah. Absolutely. So you, you said you started off with house hacking and you said you have mm -hmm. some investments in California and some outside of, you know, outside out of the state as well. So what, what's your primary investment strategy in California? Did you use single family homes or multifamily or, or what? So especially as of late, there's been a lot of changes in, in California, like real estate law and tenant tenant laws. So things have changed. So if someone's looking to house hack, house hacking is fantastic. However, I don't necessarily for someone trying to get into real estate investing, recommend that someone look at investing in California for like a long-term rental for cash flow. I just think there's other things that we can do. So my main investment strategies and what we help a lot of clients do is short-term rentals and drivable vacation destinations of SoCal. So the mountains and the desert areas, and then also midterm rentals, which is a new, more like emerging asset class that gets around the strict short-term rental ordinances and guidelines in different cities that are impacted by minimal housing supply, but then also you're able to maximize that rental income that you could receive every beyond just a, a long-term rental. So short-term rentals, mid-term rentals, and house hacking is really our go-to strategies based upon where the client is at. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that you're like educating yourself enough to be able to move or like pivot out of different strategies, right? Like when the laws change and then that you're also willing to educate yourself so that you can educate the people that you're helping, right? Because like a lot of times you see that people are like, nope, this is what I know. And this is all I'm going to, you know, advise. Whereas you are going like above and beyond to be like, no, like it's important to know all of these different kinds of strategies because like when you win, as in the investor, like I went to or vice versa, you know what I mean? Like when you make real estate investing a win-win for everyone, it creates so much more confidence in the space. And I love that. Yes. Especially when people are looking for a realtor, right? When you're looking for a realtor to help you, mm -hmm. like that realtor has got to be well, got to have the, like you just said, I don't know, it's common sense to me, but I don't think it is for a lot of people. You have to stay up to date with this stuff, right? They can't just say, oh no, you can increase the rent or you can do this. You can, you know, it's like, no, no, no. You, you have to stay with it. And so having a real estate agent that's kind of, I, I like to say, I'm in the game with you, right? I'm doing this right alongside you. 
I've got my capital into this market too. So I'm paying attention. Here's what I'm doing. Here's where we're pivoting. Here's what David's doing too, right? And I can share, you know, a little bit of insight into that world in terms of, you know, here's what, here's what he's doing. I'm following that too. And it's more like a collective community of investors helping one another versus we're just going to, you know, open up a door and write a contract for you and, you know, talk to an attorney. It's like, yes, talk to an attorney, but here's, we're going to advise you as we're doing it ourselves also. So that's a number one quality someone should be looking for if they're looking to start or grow a portfolio. Make sure that agent has success, both helping clients and themselves in that area and asset type that you're looking to do. Because it's got a real, that could make or break your success. Yeah. Totally. What advice would you give to someone who might be nervous about like approaching different realtors about investment properties, right? Because Michael and I, at the very beginning of our journey, we're going to do the single family route. And looking back on it now, we definitely should have had a different realtor <laughs> because she, we just didn't know what questions to ask, actually. So maybe that's, I'm asking for myself, but, and for others as well, like what questions should people be asking to find if, find that out? Yeah. Or should you even be using a realtor who's not also an investor if you're trying to buy investment properties? Yeah, this is a, a very, very good and complex question. So I'll try to keep it as concise as possible. But first off, I mean, most importantly, you have to trust the person. Yeah. right? Whoever's on the other side, you got to feel like even if maybe they don't invest in real estate or they don't have this big portfolio or a following or whatever, but you trust them, you feel you, they have references, you know, they're a good person. They're not going to screw you over. They're going to do their, their best for you. Then that's something that you want to pay attention to as well. Cause someone else who maybe invest in real estate, but you can't stand the person, <laughs> that's not going to be a great relationship either. Right? So you got to feel like that person one definitely has your best interests at heart. I would ask, here's what I would do. I would ask realtors, and I do this with the realtors that I use in other markets. Tell me about how you're having your clients are having success or failures in this market. What should I look out for? How can you advise your client in terms of maximizing the rental income here? What strategies are working? What's not working? Ask them more in-depth questions and don't just, you know, try, try to keep them open-ended to see how much they can share with you. Because if they ask, you know, where are clients having success in SoCal, I'll go on a big old, you know, thing because it's, it's, and they can hear my passion behind it and they can hear my experience behind it. I hope anyway, right? That's the goal. Yeah. And it comes out of me organically. Again, I hope so, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that's what I, that's what I'm looking for in a realtor that I'm using to buy or sell my out of state and investment properties. Where are your clients having success? What should we look out for as investors? What do you see being the, the best strategy? And if they're kind of dancing around the question or if they're, you know, not really wanting to do a deep dive into that or that doesn't get them excited to talk about that, probably want to look in another direction. Other investors have great referrals for agents that they have liked and have not liked. So other investors in your community will be a great resource for you. But if you're looking on your own, ask the agent to tell stories about their client successes in investing and you can kind of, you, I think you should be able to get a pretty good glimpse of their personality, if they're excited about it or not, if they're passionate about it or not, and if they're doing it successfully or not. That's true. We we heard uh, something the other day from one of our friends who's a realtor and also an investor. And he said, you know, he was talking to a group of people. He's like, you know what? If you think your realtor has your best interest, then send them a the worst property you can absolutely find True. and send it to them and say, hey, I want to put an offer on this, on this property. If they say, okay, let's do it without any hesitation, then you know you have the wrong realtor, right? <laughs> I love that. I just did a, a tour with a client this morning and, and I, I told them, I said, I don't like this property for you. You need to pass. This concerns me, this concerns me, this concerns me. She she like liked it and she was ready to go and put an offer. And I'm like, you know, I think you can do better. I don't like this for you because of X, Y, and Z. And, you know, yeah, that's that's fantastic. If they're like, okay, yeah, this is a great property. And David calls it being like an order taker versus like a, going to a fine dining restaurant and giving suggestions, right? Like, is the client determining the, I guess, the direction of relationship too much? Because like, if you can go walk into a house or like look into a property and the the investor or the client is like, oh, I don't like this. And the agent's like, yeah, I don't like that either. Oh, this isn't too bad. Yeah, no, that's great. Like if they're just agreeing with everything that the client's saying, that's potentially they're just going to agree with agree with you and you may not actually get the best property possible, right? And then, you know, so that's, that's, a, that's great. <laughs> I think that's combine that with asking for stories of success and you're going to know if you found the right person or not. Well, that's, that's solid. 
There you have it, Lindsay, the sommelier of real estate. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, I mean, but like your realtor is your is a critical partner, right? Like that yeah, is yeah. huge. And you need to, I guess, view that person that way. Because if you don't, right, and you just see it as like a transaction versus a relationship, that is the results that you you will get. You will get a transaction instead of a relationship. Mm-hmm. You don't want that. Absolutely. 100%. Cool. Well, Lindsay, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you this far. We are unfortunately moving towards the end of the show, which brings us to our four exploratory questions we ask all of our fabulous guests. So, Lindsay, if you're ready, we will begin the questioning. I'm ready. Awesome. So the first question we have for you, I'm glad you said yes, because we haven't had anybody say no, that they're not ready, but not sure. <laughs> but anyways, the first question we have for you is, what is, where is one place you wish to travel to and why? If I had to pick just one place to travel to, it would be Israel, the Holy oh, Land. Cool. cool. Yeah. Faith is a big part of our, of our world. It's a big part of why I do real estate. You know, we're, we're involved in our church and, you know, want to be around to raise my kids. And I would love to travel to Israel, show my kids where Jesus walked and travel there myself. So that's definitely a bucket list item for me. Very, very cool. cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thanks. And then to go into the second question, what is something on your bucket list and how are you leveraging real estate investing to achieve it? So yes, that, but also I just, my husband and I wanted to do a month of back packing through Europe for our honeymoon. We didn't do it. We bought a triplex instead. (laughs) You know, again, the sacrifices that you make, but I would love to do that. And real estate, I'm going to be leveraging this in two ways. One, of course, our our investments, our short-term rentals and our long-term rentals, providing the the cash flow for that trip during that time while I can't work. But I've also built a team, you know, a business that I can theoretically step away for a little bit and it will still run. So two ways, building real estate business and also our portfolio to fund that. So I would love to do that in the future. That's definitely a bucket list to finally get that backpacking trip through Europe. I love it. Yeah. And I like that you included two different ways how you're leveraging, right? Because some people might think like there's only one way. But so thanks for including that second one. Of course. So the third question is. What is one piece of advice you have for someone who wants to start passively investing in real estate? You got to evaluate your circle. This is getting more and more common to talk about because of platforms like what you guys have, like Instagram, bigger pockets and, and podcasts and books and everything. So more people are getting access to this information, but still very few people actually go and do it. So really keep a close, a mindful eye of who you're letting influence you. Do the people around you share the same vision? That's this big reason why I joined GoBundance, right? I was like, I need to be around a lot of other women who are doing things that I'm like, I need to be on your level, yeah. right? You should never be the the smartest, the richest, any any kind of person in the room, right? I want to be the opposite. So really evaluate your circle and just, it doesn't have to, you don't have to join GoBundance or anything like that, right? But just try to start attending meetups. Start talking around people who are doing it and make the positive, I guess there's so much negativity around it, right? Oh, it's, it's risky. It's this, it's that, it's, it's this. And really keep an account too. I like to tell people, don't take advice from someone you wouldn't trade places with. I really had mm-hmm. to take this into consideration and my husband and I too, when we started this, we really didn't have anybody to support us or say, yeah, the, you know, good idea. Most people said, no, you're crazy. And we're like, well, we don't want to, we want something different for ourselves. Yeah. Right. So it starts with trying to take in a lot of information and value your circle, but don't let yourself get into analysis paralysis, nor don't overcomplicate your first deal. I think a lot of people sit on the sidelines because they try to overcomplicate their first go of real estate, where it's like, just get in there, yeah. get in there. It doesn't have to be the best deal of your life. It won't be the best deal of your life, but it's, it's going to get, it, that's going to start momentum. So just don't overcomplicate it and elevate your circle. And I think that people will find themselves a lot further ahead than they think. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I want to highlight one thing that you said and just to repeat it as well. It's like you said, don't take advice from someone who you, who you wouldn't want to uh, trade places, trade places. places with. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it in my head. Yeah, it just didn't come out. But yeah, I love that because it's like a lot of people take advice from people who don't have any experience mm-hmm. in what they're trying to do, right? And it's just human nature for us to listen to it and then like have an emotional response to it. So mm-hmm. be careful of who you take advice from. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And then our fourth and final question is, if you had unlimited resources available to you, how would you leave an impact? Oh, there's so many things I want to do. If I had unlimited resources, we are very, we have a heart for two, I'm, well, I'm going to add three types of people in this, on this world. So veterans, husbands, as a veteran, we use like Section 8 for veterans to fill our houses at one time, you know, and that's very near and dear to us. So vets, 
foster care and special needs community. Like if I could build out, like this has been like a dream of mine to have even to build out a, a facility, like a play facility, like a safe space for kids with special needs to come and, and play and parents can be together. They don't have to worry about their kid running off in the park or, you know, having any kind of, you know, disturbance in their time together. I would love to build something like that. We'd love to build more housing for veterans. I would love to build more resources for their foster care community. Just anything I can build with real estate to help people who I feel deserve it and need it a lot. And, you know, if I could leave something back for my kids to, to take into, and to take into their life as a legacy, I would love that as well. Yeah. There's, there's so much that I want to do, but if I had unlimited resources, but I would want to build more housing in, in, in communities and stuff like that for those three types of people. And I feel like that would make an impact. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's like cool about that though, is that something, I mean, that real estate, I guess, brought to us or maybe some Side by side, right? I'm not 100% sure how to word this right now, but when you get into rooms with other people who start thinking about creating like ripples and bigger impacts, like within themselves, their family, and then their community, like this is where all these ideas come from. And then, oh, you know, like my idea doesn't seem so like scary because other people have ideas that are, you know, bigger or just the same. You know, like there are people out there who want to also change the world. And I just think it's cool that like so many people, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Matter. Well, it does matter what community you're in, but in real estate, right, you see that a lot of people in this community are trying to do that. I find a lot of people in this community are very good people. Yeah. That's one thing I just, I love. A lot of people, you're, you're hard pressed to really find somebody, at least in, if you're looking for a good community that, you know, is not a good person or doesn't want to give back and do good with their wealth. I, I love the abundance because I was like, you know, I don't want to join like a rotary club where it's just like, look at me. I want to be around people who are doing bigger things than me because I have all these ideas in my head and that's probably just entrepreneurs and, you know, we're, we have a million ideas all the time and can't focus on anything, but that's a different story. But you meet other people who are like, hey, that's my passion too, or here's my who, you know, you're the who, not how kind of thing. You might meet your who in a community like a GoFundance or another real estate meetup or something. So there's a lot of really good people out there, you know, and it's, it's really encouraging, especially when you, you run into them and like you said, you could share what you're passionate about, the kind of impact that you want to make, and uh, yeah, just being a good community with other people like that. I love that. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, Lindsay, before we end the show, would you mind sharing with our adventurous, adventurous family where they can find out more about you and connect with you? Yeah. So the easiest way to find out more about me and connect is on Instagram. I'm on there quite a bit. I try to use that as a, a platform for education more so than anything. And my Handle is Lindsay Iskerko Realtor. They can also look up David Green Team SoCal on Instagram and they'll find that as well. And they can find me that way too. And if they want to learn more about, you know, investing in an area like Southern California, love to chat with them on there. But Instagram is going to be the best way to, to get a hold of me. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll make sure to include that in the show notes so that people can find you super easily. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you reach out to Lindsay to connect, make sure you say that you heard her interview on the Adventures of Real Estate Investor podcast, and she will be sure to accept your connection. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you again, Lindsay, for joining us. It truly was a pleasure, you know, for you to share your experience with others. So thank you for spending your time here today. Thank you, guys. It was so much fun. Thank you. So until next time, explore more Adventure Awaits. Woo! 